Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to Work Trends with Megan and Biro. Whether you're here to network, learn, or share, we want you to have fun. During this live broadcast and Twitter chat, we'll discuss the future of work with smart and entertaining guests who value today's business and its impact on the world of work for the future. Stay tuned, because we start in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> oh, I think it's time for a new podcast intro. What do you guys think? I want to crowdsource it with all of my work trends friends today. There's some change in the air with talent culture, and I'm excited. Uh, I'll be tickling you all with uh, updates as we go, but... I think we're going to need some new intro music for that one. And I'd love to hear from you. He is kind of fun, though. It makes me feel like dancing a little bit. But it's, um, I don't know, I'm feeling like it's time for a refresh, right? Something new. Anyways, it, you know, it's, it's also a new year. We're getting ready for a new president. Um, I don't know about any of you, but Obama was amazing last night. Brought me to tears. Um, I thought that speech was incredible. And, 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 and he's leaving on a high note. So uh, to all you Obama fans, stay strong. We're in for some change, but uh, we're going to try to make the best of it. So listen, thanks to you, my sponsors, my community, my friends, um, all of you make it possible for this to go on every single week. And let me, let me tell you something. Today's topic is a big deal. We're going to be discussing and tweeting about the topic of mentoring, but mentoring specifically for women by women. According to a 2011 survey of more than 1,000 working women conducted by, well, you know, LinkedIn, the networking site, um, one out of five women say they've never had a mentor at work. And I just find this kind of sad, um, and I think it's totally unacceptable to me. And I think to many women I know, you, you may feel the same way. I want to hear from you. Um, whether you're male or female today, I want to hear from you or somewhere in between. Everyone is welcome to this discussion today. Um, our special guest that I have here in the green room, and now we're live, is Valerie Martinelli. She's going to help us sort through this topic. She is currently the CEO and owner of Valerie Martinelli Consulting. She is a leadership, life, and career coach. She's also an HR and management consultant. So she's wearing a number of hats. We want to unpack that a little bit. She's the founder of Innovate 5050, a gender equality campaign and mentorship program for women, which I think is really cool. She's also the host of Innovate Women, a monthly Twitter chat that discusses issues that affect women, such as those in the workplace, professional, society, and economics. Valerie, welcome to Work Trends. I'm so excited Hi, to have thank you, you here. Hi, our... me. Yes. We're excited to dig into this topic with you. So welcome. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Where are you today? Where do you hail from? Tell our audience a little bit more about uh, where you're at and all that fun stuff. We want to picture that. Go ahead. Go for it. I am in Connecticut. Um, This is where I've been born and raised. I've lived here my whole life, and I have yet to move from here. So Um, it's freezing cold here today, so anyone who lives in the Northeast, you know what I'm talking about. It's actually, actually, I think today's a little warmer, but it's been cold. We've gotten yeah. more snow, so, yeah. Anyone I know. Here, you know what it's like. It's so. cold. I know what it's like. I'm actually, I hail from Connecticut myself, although we've never really formally met each other. I think we, we've we been swirling about in social circles with each other for a while. Where in Connecticut yes, are, you, have. are you from? Waterbury. Oh, cool. All right. The other side of Connecticut. It, it's actually mountainous over there. Yeah, it is. That was a joke, Valerie. It was a joke. <laughs> it's mountainous there. Can you imagine? <laughs> Sorry. That oh, was over boy. My head. I'm, I'm a cornball sometimes. Oh, Just bear boy. with me. Get your, buckle, buckle your seatbelt, would you? I, I so, think I'm going to need it. I think you need it. It's coffee time. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what it's like to be Valerie Martinelli. Tell us about uh, your background. What led you to be excited about mentoring? You know, a day in the life of me can be a little nutty. Um, you know, I can be a little here and a little there and a little everywhere. Um, 
I have a background in actually political science. My undergrad is in poli sci, and my grad is in public administration. I am a uh, an advocate for women, big time. Um, I have been noticing that women do not have enough mentors in the workplace, actually out of the workplace as well, if you want to be exact. But um, yeah, this is, something, this is something that has troubled me for a while, and. And I actually began my business a little bit backwards. I started with Innovate 5050 and began with the mentorship program. And um, I kind of developed that idea into my business itself. And I wanted to give women more. I wanted to give them the mentoring and the coaching and really everything that they needed. And my consulting is kind of developed around businesses and what they can give to their employees. Um, you know, not well. Some of it is gender diversity for women, and some of it is for everyone. But these these programs that can be developed for all of their employees to they need to professionally develop and to give back into their workplace. So it's kind of a win win for everyone. But you know, they analyze for me. Too, I'm always. Me. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of nutty and just sort of a surprise. Why do so many women fail to support each other? Why? What is that about? Because I've got to be honest. You know, that bothers sure me. I've got, there's other people out there on the Twitters today on the work, using the hashtag work trends who, who I'd love to hear from you and, and hear your thoughts on this. But what's this whole competitive thing? It's super lame. And it's been going on for quite a while. It's what is that been about? going on for far too long, in my opinion. I think it's time we all need to start supporting each other and rallying around each other and finding a way to help each other out, even if it's a big thing or a small thing. Um, you know, I don't think there's enough mentors for women by women. Um, some think that it's by men, but I mean, to be honest with you, I think that opinion is a little divided by who you speak to. Um, you know, and who, who, you know, I think by their industry as well. But, you know, this, this has got to stop. Um, this is something that I've seen mentoring and coaching. Women could be very cutthroat with each other. Um, in the workplace, they'll talk to me about so-and-so getting a promotion and that they're not happy. And when I start po- poking and prodding and asking questions, are they not happy because they feel let down within themselves or, because they want to learn more about them, themselves and they want, they expect more from themselves professionally and personally. No, it's because it's a competition. And wow. they're this, that, yeah, they're upset that this person got this promotion. They don't think so-and-so deserves it. Oh, I stop them right there half the mm-hmm. time. I don't want to hear about that because I'm there to work with them and they need to look at themselves. This isn't, Kindergarten. We were here to consistently compete with each other. Are you sure? Because sometimes it yeah. feels like we are in kindergarten. I'm just oh, saying. Well, you know. That ended a long time ago, dear. Oh. Okay. Why but in fairness, we got out of kindergarten. Yeah. Um, right. You know, in in fairness, though, place. don't you we think that support each other? Don't you think that women and men both experience that though? I mean, I know today's topic is really about women elevating women, but I just want to kind of throw that in there to the mix that there's so much competition in the workplace, in and out of the workplace, right, in general. So I feel like that's more of a human thing, but I guess where I'm going with this is how did you, like, how is your experience with women, just dealing with women in your business? Like, what is that like from a marketing perspective, a you know, because, I mean, you have to position that in a certain way, right? I mean, I know that there's a huge yes. audience of, of women out there who would be looking for something just like this. You know, and, there, you know, and I, I love working with women. I, I do. I truly do. But I do not want to hear women cut each other down um, because that's not what I'm about. That's not what I'm mm-hmm. about at all. It, this isn't, you know, I didn't begin this business as a cat of competition for whatever – you know, whatever, anything. It, that's not my, that's not my objective, mm-hmm. and that's not my mission. It, I'm here to boost anyone up. 
you know, it could be a small, it could be something small, it could be something large. It doesn't matter to me because to me, if it's big to you, then it's big to me. So, in That's other words, if cool. it matters I love enough that. to you to, if it matters enough to you to take coaching, then it matters enough to me to actually want to be there to take action on it. So, you shouldn't be concerned about what's happening with someone else. And so often we are. It's unfortunate, well, that's also you know, a but it's true. Professionally, that's, that's where I think we yeah. get tripped up, though, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us, how does somebody go about finding a mentor and what questions should be asked to determine if this potential mentor is the right fit for what we need? Because I know so much of coaching is really about fit. Yes. Yeah, it really is. You can, you can basically find a mentor almost anywhere. People always think that a mentor needs to be someone who is older and wiser. A mentor does not need to be someone who is older or wiser. A mentor can be your age or even a little younger. A mentor is just someone that has something valuable to offer you, whether it be professionally, personally, or even in um, entrepreneurship, I find that's where mentorship is also very, very important um, because there's always something that you're, you're seeking to learn and seeking to gain from someone else, especially if also as well if you're looking to, if you're starting a new job and you're in this new workplace and you have no idea who many of these people are and you want to get settled and you want to learn all these new things, and a mentor is the first person who can guide you. So mentors, I think, are one of the best things that we can have. But asking as far as asking questions, you need to find the right fit. Um, you know, you need to just try and get to know them. It's like any other relationship. Ask all of these questions Absolutely. that you would ask anyone else. You know, it has, to, it has to be based upon give and take. It has to be a 50-50. Don't make it all about you. You know, what can you give to me? You have to go with the open mindset of what can I also give you? Um, you know, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's an interesting angle you bring up, right? Yeah, because a lot of people, I think, experience that, that negative aspect where <clears throat> they feel like a mentee may be taking and not giving. And it has to be based upon this, this give and take relationship. Otherwise, you know, you feel like that well runs dry sort of, you, you know what I mean, that sort of uh, analogy. Okay. Makes perfect sense. You know, I'm really into the idea of mentoring programs to develop future leaders, um, especially as it relates to recruiting and retaining talent. I think it's just so important right now. How does the lack of mentoring have an impact on the lack of female representation in the fields like engineering and sciences? What is... What does that look like to you? There's not enough in, in STEM or in tech. Um, you know, I think right now we're looking at a definite lack. And I think right now it's starting to show that there's been a lack of mentors in the past. And, you know, I'm pretty sure you're probably aware of this, and I'm you're pretty sure your audience is probably also aware of this, but sexism is huge in STEM and tech. So that's something else that tends to keep women away from it. Um, mm-hmm. it, it so I, I, and I, I think the fact that they know that they may not be able to find a mentor to guide them is just an additional negative in the book that keeps them out mm-hmm. of the field. Um, but There's also, no question about it. It's also something, Megan, that goes all the way back into the college years because there's, research that shows that they this is the first major that will be dropped by a female is a stem or tech major mm-hmm. so yeah it's a little scary to me actually when you look at that hole that exists in the talent pool right that's where it is that's where we yeah. need more women talent right we need the science we need the math we need the engineering um yep. You know, I read an article which stated that mentoring can expand somebody's professional network. Tell us how that works in real life. Well, when you, you know, just, this is just how networking is, is kind of 
For some people, they think it's complex. It's really actually pretty simple. Once you begin networking, you begin more networking. With a mentor, if they can introduce you to one person, then they can introduce you to another person, and you just keep meeting people and meeting people and meeting people. And it's not even just by person by person. I also find that this helps joining groups. Um, you know, whether you can do this, um, some online groups or some local groups, uh, I usually advise people to try a mix of both. Try something by Facebook. Yeah, I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. Facebook, how have LinkedIn social, groups, yeah, how are, groups are becoming yeah. popular now as well. Slack that's, that's a hot thing right now as well is Slack groups. Try yeah. a mix. Try yeah. a mix of something local and online. Keep meeting and keep meeting. And the more people you meet and the more you actually value the connections, that's the other mistake people make in networking. They don't actually value the connections. It's like they've met somebody and then they don't talk to them. Yeah. You can't do that. Right. Or I think with online groups, you can get lazy there, right? I think it is still important to shake somebody's hand, right, and, and try to really make it that next level of, yes, we met online, um, we're in a vicinity, or I'm going to be traveling to, you know, San Francisco, and, you know, I do that all the time. You know, I travel, oh, yeah. uh, you know, if to you conferences know you're be in the and area. see clients, they're, they're offering. and if I make make time for it. Make time for that in person. There's still something really important there from my perspective. Oh, yeah. Although I agree. Definitely. I mean, I think it's a mix. I agree with you. I, it absolutely has to be a mix. Look at where we are today. We're on Twitter. We're meeting new people literally as we're tweeting using the work trends hashtag, right? It's happening. It's been happening for years, especially for myself in this community on Twitter specifically, but certainly in the LinkedIn group, on Facebook, on you know now I'm I'm more active on Instagram, which I love. I mean, there's so many options to to connect with people that you find interesting. It's amazing. Yeah. So tell us, what are some of the biggest obstacles that keep somebody from getting the most from their mentor? Because I know that this plagues a lot of people that I've spoken to. You know, I I might get some heat for this answer. I think it's yourself really truly believe from what I see the only thing that can keep you from getting the most from anything is within yourself if you are not open to what your mentor may say or be fully open to that type of relationship it's you you have to actually really be fully ready if you're not then it won't work and you won't be happy, you won't be, it won't be a comfortable relationship. It has to be 100% transparent. You have to be willing and ready to listen. And I don't mean just in one ear and out the other. I mean fully actually listen to what your mentor is going to say to you. You never know what may be said. And you have to actually be prepared. Some believe that they are ready for this type of relationship, and then they begin it. And then they get into the middle of it, and they realize, wow, this is hard. I can't do it. Or they don't want to change. They want to stay the way mm-hmm. they are. They don't want to try mm-hmm. a new habit. They don't want to try something new. I know it's scary, but <clears throat> if this is something that interests you and this is something that you want to do, then you have to be willing to let go of some old ways and listen to some new. But letting go of the old is not really scary. It's letting the new in that's probably the best thing for you. It only brings your best. Love it. I think that's very true. And I think, you know, sometimes we're our own worst enemies when it comes to that. Big time. When we talk about being an advisor, what are some of the struggles there that advisors may experience during their mentor-mentee relationship? Because it is a two-way street. You just said it right there. That's the whole thing right there. Um, you have to make sure that it's a consistent two-way street. You know, if you're meeting with your mentor in person, bring coffee. Buy, offer to buy lunch, whatever, whatever is comfortable. It doesn't have to be a big extravagant thing. Just make sure that your mentor is comfortable with you. Keep that a two-way street. Don't try to impress your mentor. Don't think that you need to 
Be something that you're not. Be open, be willing, ask questions, listen. Do not, this is a pet peeve, and I'm I'm going to be very honest about this. Do not be feeling on your phone. Do not be feeling on your phone in the middle of a meeting. It's rude. Someone's taking the time (laughs) to mentor you. Pay attention what? To what is it's rude. Said. I like never do that. None of us do. We're never looking <laughs> down at our phones while we're trying to have a meaningful conversation with somebody. It, it, you know, it is really rude. And I myself have to stop myself sometimes from doing that. Seriously. How many of you out there in the work trends community, we want to hear from you. Are you caught looking down at your phone when you should be making eye contact or you should be really truly getting to know somebody and seeing them in something I like to call 3D. And in order to see somebody in 3D, I do think you've got to put down your phone. Very good point, right? I mean, if you have to set it to silent, I understand that's fine. If you're expecting an extremely important call or, or something of that nature, that's fine. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, I'm expecting an important phone call today. I may have to step away for a couple minutes. We're human. We all understand that. That's fine. But if you're on the phone every two seconds, it's distraction to the other person who's trying to advise you. Uh, because when all you do is look at that person and you see them texting or what have you, it's, it's, you think that they're not paying attention to you and what you say is not being valued. So why are you even sitting there? That's the first thing that's going to come to their mind. Some is taking time for you. Value what they're mm-hmm. saying. That's why it's so important to be open to the relationship. Because then the other person, your advisor, is going to think, this person doesn't value my opinion and my thoughts and my time anyways. It's a constant two-way right. street. Constant two-way totally. street. Constant give and take. Hey, listen, for everybody out there who wants to develop a practice and get into business, whether it's leadership, life coaching, career coaching, um, tell us what a day in the life of, or a week in the life of Valerie Martinelli looks like. You know, are you working in an office? Are you remote? Are you at Starbucks? I mean, we're all working in so many different ways. Walk us through what it's like for anybody out there who is actually thinking about dipping their toe into the water of having their own business, and specifically this kind of business. What would you say? Well, I work from home. So, you know, there's days where I can work from home for a few days. There's days where I can be on the road. Um, you know, there's there was a couple of days this week where I was on the road quite a bit, um, you know, trying to get to some meetings back and forth. So it's it's very it's very different. But if you want to start your own business, it, it, I'm not going to lie, it's hectic. <laughs> there's yeah. <laughs> there, there's days that even if I, I walk from home and, and some people think, oh, that sounds like a luxury. Uh-uh. Are you kidding me? I could be getting tapped by my puppy to take her outside while I'm in the middle of an interview or uh, there's never enough of you. You have to put away the distractions. Right. You have to know when to stop. And that's the other problem, too, is if you're a workaholic like I am, you have to know when to stop and take a break. So mm-hmm. you have to find your balance, but you, it's not, it's not a luxury. It's not easy. You have to find what works best for you, but it's, it's not as simple. <laughs> it's, it's never easy. Or no, in the life of it's a never, startup. I mean, that's, absolutely. I, I totally hear you on that. And every day is unique. Every, every day is different. Um, there's mm-hmm. a lot of ups and downs. I mean, I love being in business for myself just because of that. But some people might want to jump out of a window, frankly, if they looked at what a day in my life looked like. They'd be like, are you kidding? And I'd be like, no, this is real. This is the roller coaster ride that it yeah. is. But, you know, I love yeah. it. Obviously, I'm, I'm here for a reason. We're, we're all motivated by something, right? Um, you have, to, keep, what are you have you? to maintain your yeah. own motivation. Don't look to someone Absolutely. else for that. If you don't, if you can't maintain your own, you probably don't want to work for yourself. Definitely um, because not. Because you have to maintain your own client base. You have to maintain your own workload. But you also have to know when you need a break and say, I can't do this today. I have to step away for an hour or so or whatever. <laughs> and, and you have to maintain your sanity. Yeah, you do. Because if you think you're going to bite your client's head off, guess what? They're probably going to fire you. 
Um, they're going to fire you in, in, in very, very quickly. So listen, I can definitely see how mentoring can create more stickiness in the workplace. And what I mean by that is I can see how it can aid in other culture initiatives like employee retention, satisfaction, productivity. What can companies do to help promote mentoring programs as a culture driver? You know, I have to say it has to start with the leadership. If you don't have your leadership on board, then you really can't promote anything. It has to start from the top up. And by that, I mean, you know, have your, your leadership team on board, and then once you decide that you want a program in the workplace, make sure that program is a complete fit for your entire workforce and your culture. Make sure it fits your values. Make sure it fits your mission. Make sure it fits your objectives. Otherwise, you're basically wasting your time and your money on putting a program in place. Uh, you know, if if you have a leadership team that can't promote it or can't, walk the talk, so to speak, then what are you doing? Really, you have mm-hmm. a program that you can't, that it, it doesn't fit. It's just kind of something you're spending money on that really doesn't work. You know, and speaking of working, right, no pun intended, right, with work trends here, <laughs> what companies or brands have you seen with a mentoring program that actually works? Are there case studies out there that you can point people to for a sense of hope? Um, you know, there are, but I haven't read any recently. I'd have to go back and do a little bit more research there for you, but there are big, big Fortune 500s, and I know that have good programs in place for their employees. And they're smart mm-hmm. by doing so because you get your value back. Once you start showing your employees that you value them, they give you that value back in return because they feel it. So it's it's a smart, it's a win-win. For small businesses, it may be hard financially. I mean, it may be difficult to actually put something like this in place. But if you're a little bit of a larger company, this is definitely a smart value for you because you're going to just, you'll earn it back. It's, it's an ROI. You will earn it back. Right. Well, listen, Valerie, your um, this has been really a, a lot of fun. I think it's a great and timely topic. Um, I want to thank you for being with us today. I know we're down to a couple more minutes. So in closing, tell us what you're currently working on and what you have planned for 2017 and, and where we can find you as we go forward. Well, you can always find me on social media, that's for sure. Um, nice. You go, girl. I'm always around there. Um, you know, I am. I'm, oh, I will always be around in Connecticut. I just joined our chamber, our regional chamber of commerce, so I will be at some of their events. Um, I am starting a leadership program, so that will be launching fairly soon. I will be announcing announcing a partnership fairly soon. So that's kind of a, a secret, a little nice. bit. So for a little a little longer, I okay. just I just launched a. Um, career coaching package new for this year. So I have some things that will be coming out little by little, and you'll be hearing more and more from me. So keep your eyes so where posted. Do people, where and do people find you? Primarily on Twitter, or where, where are you showcasing your I'm, thoughts? I'm primarily on Twitter. I also have a Facebook page. I have a LinkedIn page. I have a Google Plus page. I'm pretty much uh, located everywhere, but you can find me mostly on Twitter. Awesome. Well, listen, uh, thanks again, Valerie. It's been a lot of fun chatting you up, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in person one of these hours. Thank you. You too. I'm, I'm excited. I, you know, I hope we get to do that one day. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you.